So this is the house where the guy lives who took my money. This is it. That's what my money pays for. It does actually make me very angry. I would have bought a house too, I would have put a deposit on the house. Now I'm stuck renting for the rest of my life. He took everything I had. I lost a lifetime's worth of savings. I was so ashamed and so embarrassed. It was sort of eating away at me. I had to look at how I was going to recover mentally and emotionally so I could continue my life. Nobody seems to have been held accountable. A lot of investors have lost money. Where has it gone? Thousands of people put their savings in the hands of a company that offered them a comfortable retirement. This development does not exist. This looks like where the site should have been yeah. built. Yeah. And there's nothing here, there's just a car park. They haven't even started building it yet. This is where your pension money should have been invested. It yeah. should have been invested in this site, on this car park, on this land. Every year, a billion pounds is lost in failed investment schemes. This is the story of one of them. On a very personal level, I went to tell my wife I lost this money. Sent me to a mentally dark place. Now those who lost their precious savings are setting out to discover the truth about the people they trusted with their money. It's very odd that they should make quite a significant payment, over £2 million, to a company based in Gibraltar. I've been doing everything I can to try and get some of this money back. You could just roll over and take it and say, oh, it's gone. But the more investigating we do, the more we're uncovering. To have a Facebook page with your picture alongside the Wolf of Wall Street, not sure what planet this guy's on. They want to know why they're having to fight to get their money back, because others didn't do enough to protect them. The regulators have failed. We want to know why it happened, who is responsible for it. I would fight till my last breath to make sure that we get justice. I'm not going to let them get away with it. No way. My name's John Robbins. I joined up with the RAF to get a sense of adventure. I wanted to uh, see the world and have a job which I enjoyed doing and also look back on and, and, and do something that I was proud of. This is my uh, medal I got from a tour of Iraq, which was 2004 and 2005. Very eventful, there's a lot going on. We were shot at, uh, we had to avoid landmines. We were all in the same situation together, but it was very, very scary. After my eight years in the RAF, I managed to save a, a fair bit of money. And I was advised that Blackmore Bonds was a very safe choice for investments. I invested £5,000 initially back in 2017. My children are still young teenagers, so it was something to have for the future. I got my interest payments on a regular basis, so then I invested a little bit more and a little bit more to the position where I'd invested £60,000 in total over a number of years. I was sent statements regularly telling me how much interest my money had accrued over the time. It wasn't probably until a couple of years ago that the interest stopped. When I contacted Blackmore's officers, they said, oh, there'd been a problem. They were waiting for some properties to sell. Then eventually you couldn't get hold of anyone. Any communication with Blackmore was dead. It was just gone. I'm Jack Gilbert. I'm a journalist and editor at CityWire. We're an international financial publishing house. And part of my job is to write about scandals and investigate financial wrongdoing when we see it. 
In 2015, the law changed to allow people to cash in their pensions and invest the money themselves. Pensioners will have complete freedom to draw down as much or as little of their pension pot as they want, any time they want. It gave people more freedom, but it also made them vulnerable to slick and persuasive marketing. At the moment, we're looking at a company called Blackmore Bonds. Blackmore Bonds was an investment scheme. These were residential property developments all around the country. Supposedly, investors' money was supposed to go into these schemes and build nice houses, which would then pay back the investments. The way that Blackmore got a lot of investors in was offering very attractive returns. They're offering up to 10% per year in interest payments. Hello, I'm Philip Nunn, founder and joint CEO of the Blackmore Group. We found that the two directors who seemed to be responsible for the scheme were a man called Patrick McCreesh and Philip Nunn. Patrick McCreesh, director and fund manager. Patrick runs the Blackmore Group of companies specialising in wealth management. Philip Nunn, director and fund manager of companies in several established financial jurisdictions, including the Isle of Man and Gibraltar. The whole of the property industry is suggesting that this year we'll see growth. Some are suggesting up to 5%, and the fundamentals are really strong. So I'm looking at the company's accounts. We've noticed some real red flags. The scheme, known as a mini-bond, should by law only be sold to experienced or sophisticated investors. I explained to McCreese that um, I had no experience with investments at all. Every time I spoke to him, he was very reassuring and told me my money was going to be safe with him. As soon as these interest payments were due, I realised that they were becoming late, so I decided to contact him. One of the emails I sent to him, I explained to him that this is my military pension fund and the only savings I have for retirement, and I cannot afford to lose this money. He sent me an email. We as directors personally guarantee all of these sites, and so our entire wealth are on the line to give us focus. Basically, he just fobbed me off. But then, over the next few months, we heard that Blackmore was going to go into administration. The Blackmore bond, which was based in Manchester, collapsed in April 2020. The personal guarantee proved worthless. After payments to lenders and millions in fees to Nunn and McCreesh's companies, there was virtually nothing left. I just felt sick. I couldn't believe that I'd made such a poor decision. I didn't sleep very well for a long time, just thinking about what I'd done and what that meant to me and to my family. The fact that I would never, ever recoup that investment in the remainder of my working life. I went through feeling very, very angry, very embarrassed about it, yeah, very humiliated. You know, I panicked. Um, this was all the money I had, all the money that I'd saved up over all these years. And it seems to be untraceable. Where has it gone? Over 2,000 investors have lost around £46 million. Anyone you get caught out by one of these investments, there's often a web of complexity around these schemes, and if you look at marketing material and brochures around them, they can seem like good investments. We've seen this affect a vast array of people. Often the vulnerable are targeted. They lose pensions they've saved up their whole lives for. Could ruin their lives. One, two, three, four, five, six. I just hope one day I can come off these tablets. <laughs> Not for the one to try in. I'm Paul Stevens. I've worked for Seven Trent Water for 25 years. You got promoted and promoted and promoted. Everything was great, and all that was just suddenly pulled away. 2015, I was driving to work one morning, and then I thought, I can't see. I had to pull the car over. I had double vision, and uh, then I went to the hospital. This cut a very long story short. They had diagnosed myasthenia gravis, and it can affect your speech, your face droops, your double vision, sometimes you can't walk. 
Oh, it, it just destroys you. But fortunately, I got an ill health pension and I invested £20,000 into Blackmore Bond. It looked great. Paul, Jane and all 2,000 investors were told the money was protected by an insurance scheme. It hasn't paid out and investors think it's unlikely that it ever will. I did my due diligence. I really went into the detail. It said you got a £75,000 guarantee. It's guaranteed by insurance. When, when we discovered it wasn't going to pay out, the feelings were sickening. We then found out that the capital guarantee scheme was based in Costa Rica. Why is it so far away? That's something we can't get our head around. Well, the side effects to some of the medications are horrendous. Losing the money made things worse. We want justice and we want our money back. Today we're meeting a man called Mahindra, who is one of the investors in Blackmore. Mahindra. Hi, Jack. How are you? Good Hi, to see nice you. Nice to finally meet you. Yeah, nice to finally meet yeah, you. Can you take been... a seat? So did a Google search. Blackmore Bond came on the top. Yeah. So I went into the website, downloaded all of their promotion material. I do proper due diligence because I'm a chartered accountant. I will show you what they were telling yeah, us. Please. I mean, here is a particular property in Stevenage. That's the kind of properties they were going to build. Luxury flats. Yeah. I mean, it looks lovely. There's nothing here. It's just a car park. This is extraordinary. I can't believe they haven't built anything. No. they built nothing. And, and they're talking about making a margin of 15%, and they're going to make two million out of it. And, and they haven't even started building yeah. yet. Pulling wool over our eyes, you know. Some homes were built elsewhere, but this proposed apartment block in Liverpool looks like this. My God, where our money is gone, huh? Jack's been looking at what he thinks may be part of the answer. It appears Nunn and Macrish's company took five and a half million pounds in fees from the investment pot. The investors' money was not going to the investments for which they thought it was going, which is another red flag. It makes the whole scheme very high risk. Paul and Jane are taking a closer look at Blackmore's glossy promotional material. Peter Donnellan, an investor. This guy is in the magazine. Yeah. He's supposed to have invested his money in what we invested in. He has 10,000 to invest, keen on property investment, like we are. Let's see if we can find him. So this is reverse image search. All you do is put a picture into that. Show matching images. Oh, there he is, look. Oh, my God. So this is Ivan Serov now, ex-head of the KGB. Goodness sake. He's not only former head of the KGB, he's a church pastor. Ross G. Do you think someone out there actually knows this chap? This is where it all starts to make you feel a little bit sick. It's just... Stock photos. Stock <laughs> yeah. photographs of people that you can just use, and that's yeah. just wrong. How are you? You all right? So, I just sent you something. Does that make sense to you? You're happy to send it in? Because of my background in finance, because I understand some of the financial aspects of these investments, I shared the information, what I have, onto our Facebook group. It's a community site where we share, support, help each other. Some of these people are in their 60s, 70s and beyond that. Some of them are not in good health. We are actually contacting 
all the bodies which we believe can actually help us. But we feel that we are on our own, we are struggling, we are not getting the right help and support we want. We are up against a brick wall. Unknown to Mahendra and the others, someone had been trying to help them. My name is Paul Carlier. I worked in seven of the world's ten largest banks on the trading floor for 28 years. In March 2017, I was one of a team of financial markets professionals and experts working in these offices just off Moorgate. But separated by one of those very thin glass partitions in the office next door, we could hear and see everything they were doing. And it quickly became apparent that they were nothing more than a boiler room. So-called boiler rooms that use high-pressure sales techniques are banned. This one wasn't run by Blackmore, but was promoting its products. The Financial Conduct Authority, or FCA, set up to protect ordinary investors, received several warnings. They were literally cold calling people and approaching people with an intent to sell them a toxic or worthless investment product, you know, including the Blackmore bond. And if somebody was to put the phone down and he'd managed to commit somebody to investing, it'd be a clap, it'd be a high five with the other guys in the room, and we all, you know, couldn't quite believe what we were hearing. I made a note of everything, I made the report to the FCA, and I told them the details. The FCA replied and said that they would make sure this was escalated to the relevant team, and that was it. John has discovered a development linked to Blackmore that has gone ahead and is being promoted online with this stunning walkthrough video. But it wasn't designed to benefit him or the other investors. So this is just something I found online. So this is a state agent's video for Philip Nunn's uh, property that he's renovated. Philip Nunn is the guy that works alongside Patrick McCreesh. Him and Patrick own Blackmore. Nunn's bought this farm. The barns that were on there, he's renovated and done up and uh, selling them for over a million pounds. Obviously, very expensive job, no expenses spared on this one. I've been digging around a bit, looking at Blackmore's accounts for around the uh, end of 2018. So Blackmore Group Limited uh, Financial Statements, Loans to Directors. Name of the director receiving the advance credit, Philip Nunn, quarter of a million pounds. And it says on their loan for renovation. He hasn't finished the developments that are promised in the bonds, yet he's taken this money to renovate his own house, which is now trying to sell for 1.1 million pounds. The cheek of it. It's shocking, unbelievable. Before setting up Blackmore, another non and McCreesh company and almost a million pounds introducing potential investors to a separate fund, which collapsed, owing 120 million pounds. The Serious Fraud Office is investigating the fund. At the time, Philip Nunn chose a surprising role model on his social media. The show goes on! Convicted fraudster Jordan Belfort a role that won Leonardo DiCaprio an Oscar nomination as the Wolf of Wall Street. I ain't going nowhere. Yeah, this is a uh, Philip Nunn's Facebook uh, cover photo showing the guy he aspires to be, Wolf of Wall Street. Back in 2014, this one, so he's obviously been working towards uh, being this guy getting out of a beautiful Rolls Royce in what looks like a exotic location, which I think is possibly Dubai. Doesn't look as though he's actually got any hardship in his life compared to the people that he's left behind and the trail of disruption that he's left in his wake as a result of Blackmore bonds. Nunn and McCreesh created a flashy high-profile image involving golf and football sponsorship. That whole promotional video just promoted success, basically, huge success. You know, Philip Nunn shaking their hands as though he was, like, um, part of that winning team. Football team spraying champagne over themselves. 
who says pensions can't be cool, the headline across the Manchester Business Weekly. Well, um, they would be cool if people still had their pensions and they were doing what Philip Nunn said that they were going to do for them you know, making savings cool and sexy. Well, I don't have any savings that are tangible anymore because they've just vanished, apparently. Philip Nunn isn't talking to Blackmore investors, but he's happy to boast about his philosophy online. Something that I think that people continually get wrong, the word is fear. F-E-A-R, fear. If you imagine success is the fire, the fire's burning really strong. Fear is the water that puts the fire out. I, I'm, I'm a bit confused as to what he's actually a professional at. He's sort of, you know, this supposedly multi-million pound businessman, entrepreneur, then now he's like emotionally and mentally sort of lecturing about, you know, thought process. What has been your greatest failure and what did you learn from it more importantly? <laughs> I used to believe that it was um, more important to drive a Range Rover and have 40 people working for me than actually being happy day to day. If you're not following your passion, you're basically working from ego and the ego is dangerous. Wow. I I absolutely shocked that he, he seems to have no, no mention of that. He's taken over £40 million worth of British taxpayers investments, pensions, savings, and just made them vanish into nothing. On top of the millions that went to Nunn and Macrish's companies in fees, John is investigating a further payment of £7 million. He's asked Paul Callier to help explain. Hey, John. Paul, thanks for coming to see me. How are you doing? I just wanted to take a look at something for me. We've got the 2017 accounts here for Blackmore bonds. They have paid out £7 million in fees from the £26 million that they've take, taken up to 2017. I mean, that alone is, is disturbing. 26 million invested, at least £7 million has gone straight away. They're immediately diluting the investment by some 20, 25%. If you are taking 25% plus of the amount invested away, you are going to end up having to generate returns of close to like 50% or more. And you know, the best fund managers in the world aren't delivering those kinds of returns. Nowhere, nowhere near. That seven million went to a marketing company that, according to Patrick McCreesh, also provided office and management support. The Serious Fraud Office is now investigating it over another investment scheme. You say that you invested in 2019 in Blackmore Bond. That's right, yes. I mean, this is what, what disturbs me most, is that I reported Blackmore Bond to the FCA in March 2017. Um, and 2017? Yeah. I didn't invest until 2019, so why wasn't anything done? Why wasn't it stopped before that point? Well. This, this is what, you know, Looking five into. years on, yeah. I'm still trying to determine. It's inexcusable, you know, I've... So that could have prevented all these people investing their money. Uh, these 2,000 people that invested, most of that could have been prevented. Yeah. The Blackmore bond wasn't regulated by the FCA because it was only meant for experienced investors. But Paul believes the FCA should have stepped in when he warned them ordinary investors were being signed up by a sales company used by Blackmore. He contacted the FCA again. FYI, these guys are still pushing this Blackmore bond product. 9.9% yield, interest paid quarterly, 75,000 maximum investment, all guaranteed. He was assured something would be done. But a year later, with the company still operating, he repeated his warning. So it's at that point that I escalated all my emails from March 17 directly to Andrew Bailey, who was the CEO of the FCA at the time. And I say myself and my team all personally witnessed and heard each of their phone calls with their clients. The majority were clearly cold calls and they were clearly targeting pensions. So now there can be no excuses. You know about it. Now what are you going to do? Andrew Bailey was aware of it in August 2018 and yet another 10 million plus was invested after 
he was aware of it, it through from the remainder of 2018 and into 2019. They, it's astonishing. I don't, I don't know what more you could have done. I entrusted them to deal with it, and they didn't. The FCA denies it failed to act and says it shared intelligence about the Blackmore bond with the City of London Police in 2017 and forced the sales company to shut its website. Jack believes the Blackmore scandal is about to get bigger. A second scheme, run by the same two men, looks to be in trouble. Given the track record of Nottingham and Creech, I'm worried that we have another potential scandal here. It's called Blackmore Global. Blackmore Global is live. It's going on right now. It was set up in 2013. It's taken in lots of investors' money. It's an offshore investment scheme. I found that 2.5% fees was being paid to another offshore company, BG Finance Holdings registered in the tax haven of the British Virgin Islands. And this company is also owned by McCreesh and Nunn. This scheme was running for 10 years. This means that after the end of the investment, there'll be 25% of people's investments gone just in fees to the British Virgin Islands. Investors can't get their money back until next year. And I'm concerned that when that time comes, they won't be able to get it out. Jack is visiting a woman who says her pension money was invested in Blackmore Global via a wealth management company. Linda, Hello. hi, it's Jack from CityWire. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you, thanks so much for meeting me. What do you do, Linda, if you don't mind? I'm a care worker. I work with autistic people. And how long have you saved for your pension? Since I was about 22, and now I'm 61. 40 years. Mm -hmm. When you were 55, you transferred this pension. And how, how much did you invest, Linda? 75,000. I mean, that was all I had. That was the only savings I had. Once they took the money, it was hard to get any information from them. I was ringing them up every week. I didn't know where the money had gone, so then I was really worried. Jack's come to the Isle of Man, where Blackmore Global is registered. After checking out its address, and discovering that Nunn and McCreesh left bills unpaid, he heads to the office of the island's financial regulator. Richard, hi, nice to meet hi, you. Hi, Jack, nice to meet you too. Thanks for meeting me today. You're welcome. So, Richard, you put out a warning about Blackmore Global. Yeah, we gather information and assess it from many different sources, and we felt it was in the public interest to put out a public statement because we had concerns about certain aspects of the business. Can I read the warning? Is that OK? Thank you very much. The document suggests payments were made from Blackmore Global that weren't in the best interests of investors. Something Patrick McRish denies. It's quite complicated. But what this document says is the Isle of Man regulator believes Blackmore Global is acting potentially unlawfully. This is a huge warning sign for all Blackmore Global investors. I'm, I'm very worried about the investors in the, in the fund. Since people have been allowed to invest their own pensions, there's been a series of scandals in which the Financial Conduct Authority was criticised for failing to protect investors. Steel workers lost thousands of pounds when they were persuaded by financial advisers to transfer out of their secure pension. The Financial Services Regulator, the FCA, is to be investigated over its role in the British Steel pension scandal while 300,000 investors lost around a billion pounds in the Woodford scandal. Neil Woodford's flagship fund is to be shut down. The FCA was again criticised. And it doesn't stop there. Dame Elizabeth Gloucester, formerly one of the country's leading judges, ran an investigation into the collapse of another investment fund. London Capital and Finance. LCF had been carrying on for a number of years the sale of mini bonds. And what LCF did was to sell these bonds quite aggressively to investors. 
it was discovered that about 11,600 investors had invested in excess of 237 million pounds, some of whom were putting their life savings or their pension fund into these bonds. I have incredible sympathy for them because a lot of them suffered not only severe financial hardship, but also physical or mental health issues. The FCA failed to spot a number of red flags. Third parties, including apparently financial advisors, were ringing up the FCA's contact centre and raising serious questions of serious irregularity and potential or possible fraud. The FCA uh, did not, in my investigation's view, adequately address or deal with these concerns, and it should have done. Had the FCA intervened earlier, the probability is that many less investors would have uh, lost money. Following her report highlighting the regulator's failure, investors were paid compensation. We believe the same thing actually happened in case of Blackmore Bond. And to prove that, we should also get a judge-led inquiry. If the report is very damning, that would be compensation for Blackmore bondholders. It's not just Blackmore investors who are demanding better protection. MPs from all parties are calling for tighter regulation. During my investigations into this affair, Mr Speaker, I received a copy of a chain of emails between one bondholder and Patrick McCreesh. John reminded Patrick McCreesh in the most poignant terms that this was all that he had. It was a pension he had got by serving with distinction in Her Majesty's forces. None in McCreesh knew the business was dying. McCreesh still went out and deliberately targeted this poor gentleman in order to fleece him. To describe it as despicable would be excessively charitable to Mr McCreesh. The FCA's attention was drawn to some of the boiler room tactics of Blackmore Bond back in March of 2017. Yet three years later, the company was still operating. It's simply unacceptable that the FCA should take that approach and not be more proactive. Until the Financial Conduct Authority and other regulators get out of the way, there will be another generation of Johns. And in 50 years from now, and 100 years from now, our successors will be bemoaning the fact that billions of pounds have been taken out of the pockets of hard-working people and used to fund a luxury lifestyle for charlatans, for crooks and for con men. Patrick McCreesh strongly denies the MP's comments. The MPs have asked a group called the Transparency Task Force, led by financial services expert Andy Agathangelou, to help with their investigations. They've tasked us with gathering evidence about the primary conduct regulator, the Financial Conduct Authority, and to our surprise, some of the people that came forward to give us evidence included current and former FCA employees. And today we are filming somebody who's going to be reading the testimony of an existing FCA employee. The whistleblower wants MPs to hear their story, but they'll only tell it anonymously. So Andy has asked an actor to revoice their words. I'll just turn the camera on and we'll just go from there, if that's okay? Sure. The FCA tries desperately to promote itself and ignores the fact that large numbers of people have lost huge savings as a result of their proven failures. Every internal communications briefing is about self-promotion, and the poor management and leadership's behaviours have become more and more entrenched over time. The whistleblower also says staff are angry at the level of bonuses. £120 million was paid out over five years. The FCA has effectively been rewarding failure for many years and paying inflated salaries and large bonuses to incompetent senior managers. 
The FCA says it doesn't recognise the whistleblower statements. So far, the government has backed the FCA over Blackmore. Blackmore bond itself was not regulated. This is clearly a very complex area. But ultimately, the FCA cannot be said to have the same set of responsibilities towards unauthorised firms engaged in unregulated activities. Since the collapse, the FCA has been saying everything about Blackmore Bond was beyond our regulatory powers. In other words, oh, we, there was nothing we could do. It's nonsense. These toxic, unregulated investment products were being marketed and sold to what's described as non-sophisticated investors. In other words, the, the average person. The Financial Services and Markets Act, which the FCA is supposed to police, prohibit the selling of unregulated investment products to non-sophisticated investors. Paul made a formal complaint, but heard nothing back. So, he applied to the FCA for all the information it held on his case, and received a letter, he believes, by mistake. This is a document I got from the FCA, and it turns out it's the comprehensive complaint outcome to that complaint, but it's never been sent to me. I've never seen it. And in it, there's a line, it says, however, I consider there was a missed opportunity to reconsider and act on the intelligence you provided. But what you see here is that they left the track changes on and somebody has crossed that out. Somebody has sought to conceal that. That is the definition of a cover-up. Conclusion was, we dropped the ball. We missed an opportunity to act on your intelligence. And in the LCNF case, where 220 million was lost, the investors got paid a substantial amount of compensation by the Treasury. So why should Blackmore Bond investors not also be compensated because the SCA dropped the ball? In my opinion, the SCA have literally hung investors out to dry. Instead of acknowledging their mistake and compensating investors, they've sought to bury the ball and they've buried the investors along with it. The FCA says its reply to Paul Carlier was changed because further evidence came to light. It denies it was responsible for the Blackmore investors' losses. It's examining the way the company's promotional material was approved, but says investors were warned of the risks and had to confirm they understood them and could afford to lose the money. Investor Mahendra has made another discovery. Blackmore Bond is a UK property company, but I just found out that a substantial payment of 2.2 million were made to an overseas territory. It happened to be Gibraltar. If you are building property in this particular country, why would they be sending such a significant amount of money to an overseas territory? It is very suspicious. We need to get to the bottom of it in order to understand it. It just does not make sense. Linda has come to Gibraltar to follow up on Mahendra's lead. We've discovered that there's about just over £2 million being paid to a company that's registered out in Gibraltar called Aspinall Chase. I'm going to go and see what we can find out about Aspinall Chase and what the company actually does and whether the payment was legitimate and justified. She's meeting lawyer Charles Simpson, who's agreed to help point her in the right direction. Nice to see you. A colleague of mine, Mahindra, has been doing a bit of research and investigation into an investment that we made back in the UK. The company's been wound up, but over £2 million of it has been paid to a company in Gibraltar. So the question is, you know, on what basis was money paid to this Gibraltar company? Mm -hmm. Why did it come here? They have a registered office address at 186 Main Street which is not too far from here. OK, excellent. Um, so we can certainly go and, and try and find out a bit more about this company. There doesn't seem to be a lot of activity. It seems very quiet. Some of the building is obviously residential and it's not somewhere that I would expect to see over £2 million paid. 
So I think we need to go and find who owns the company. And yeah, and you can get that going. information. So you, you will get that information from the company's house. Right. Okay, so we've got the envelope from Company's House, which should tell us a little bit about Aspinall Chase. Let's just see who the owners of the company are. Right, okay, so two directors, Patrick McCreesh and Philip Nunn. So they've paid like 2.2 million, I believe, into this company to themselves, basically to themselves. Hi, Mahindra, it's Linda. Hi, Linda, how are you? Both Philip Nunn and Patrick McCreesh seem to be shareholders of the Aspinall Chase Limited um, company. But Linda, it's a UK property company. Why would they send money to Gibraltar? I really feel quite angry about this and no idea why they would have received two million pounds. So, 2.2 million to a company in Gibraltar. That's on top of 5.5 million in fees paid to another Nunn and McCreesh company. And seven million to a marketing firm now under investigation. In total, around 15 million pounds, a third of the investor's money. Administrators are going through the books. They're concerned about the way the Blackmore bond was run and say no money is left for investors. Philip Nunn and Patrick McCreese seem to be going from one business to the next. I'm looking at Pat McCreese's website here. Looks like he's advising on um, business strategy. Do something great. Well, maybe he could do something great by giving us all back our money. Philip Nunn here looks like he's going under the title of LinkedIn Master. It's astonishing that he's got over a quarter of a million, 280,000 followers. And obviously none of them know his past and what wreckage he's caused to people's lives and money he's taken. He's got this other persona. He seems to be putting himself out there as some kind of a crypto king, where he's a blockchain advisor in the world of cryptocurrency. You know, both of them need to be out of the financial business before they can cause any more damage to other people's lives. The Blackmore Bond investors now want a full inquiry into how the fund was regulated. What we're doing today is galvanising support for the idea that there needs to be radical reform. It is astonishing that something that adds up to such an egregious catastrophic regulatory case has not even had a proper, proper inquiry. Mahendra, please welcome. The Blackmore Bond investor demand Treasury and Financial Conduct Authority to wake up today and call an independent investigation led by a judge to find out what really happened and whatever the inquiry actually says, we are happy <clears> to live with it. We've invested a substantial part of our pension and savings along with Jane's father. Now, Jane's father's too upset to even be here and be involved today. On a very personal level, I'm to tell my wife that I lost this money. And then my father-in-law, you can just imagine, It might have seen it a lot worse. And it sent me to a mentally dark place for quite some time. Certainly the understanding of Jane and the family and the Facebook group that we managed to manage this loss. We're going to keep fighting until we get where we ought to go. Thank you very much indeed, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. We want change! We want change! We want change! This rally for better financial regulation is a cry for help. 
trust and confidence in the UK's financial services system is collapsing. And the reason is because the trust and confidence in the regulatory framework is collapsing too. Next we'll be going to Downing Street and then we end at Parliament. Yay! Hold your banners up nice and proud and off we go. Thank you very much indeed. This is a shocking occurrence, but it's not isolated. Nothing's changed. New head, new handle, same bloody brook. They also believe they've been failed by the man who ran the FCA. And now would you please join me in welcoming to the podium the chief executive of the FCA, Andrew Bailey. The FCA is a public authority carrying out public policy. You can't fail to be impressed when you're in the FCA about the breadth of responsibilities uh, that public policy duty is, uh, carries with it. Former judge Dame Elizabeth Gloucester also had Andrew Bailey in her sights. I considered that as CEO of the FCA, Andrew Bailey should bear responsibility for the failures in the FCA's regulation of London capital and finance. I was disappointed that not only Andrew Bailey, but also the other directors, and indeed the FCA, tried to persuade me that I should not attribute responsibility to individual directors. I disagreed with that. I think it is important that people in senior positions of power stand up and are counted when something goes wrong. You know, we owe a duty to the public. We can't sort of hold, hold back, frankly. Enough. He has presided over a catastrophic period for the FCA. If you or I are involved in catastrophic failures of this kind of nature, you're losing your job, you're going to be held rightly accountable and responsible for what's happened. Does he lose his job? The head of the Financial Conduct Authority, Andrew Bailey, has been named the new governor of the Bank of England. Now, he gets the promotion to the biggest job in the country in terms of finance. Where's the justice there? Mr Bailey declined to comment on criticism of his performance. The FCA says it accepts Dame Gloucester's review and is implementing all her recommendations. It's profoundly sorry for its mistakes and is now acting more quickly. It's issued new rules to stop people being wrongly advised to transfer their pensions and more than 700 firms are no longer doing so. Bonuses are no longer paid. I'm heading to the High Court in London because there's been an order made against Blackmore Global. I want to go inside, check it out and see what it is. The order was a court order to wind up Blackmore Global, so the fund has gone bust. This is devastating news for anyone who's invested. It's basically the end of the line for Blackmore Global. It means investors could be losing £17 million. This is really awful news for anyone who's invested in the fund. It's not yet clear how much can be salvaged. But it's not good news for carer Linda Ryan, who says her life savings were invested in Blackmore Global. I've discovered that Blackmore Global is actually being wound up. Uh -huh. The fund is, has collapsed. It looks like everyone's pension money has, has gone, really, at this point. Mm. You know, you just feel absolutely humiliated, embarrassed, angry, uh, depressed. Yeah. I'll never have enough time to save up that money again. I'm going to carry on working till, till the end, I think. I mean, it's like the last bit of hope's gone. There's been another discovery about Philip Nunn's activity online. And that gives Linda an opportunity to make contact with him. Now he's this abundance alchemist guru for well-being and positive energy, which is just laughable. Because I'm not a businessman. I am a bringer of light. I am a light facilitator. I am a light giver. He's running live feed tonight, so this should be interesting. I think I'm going to dial in and see what he's got to say. 
welcome everybody. Yeah, everyone tell me where you're from, come on. Let's get a love going round. He's got 67,000 followers. Hello Liverpool, hello Brisbane. Oh my goodness, Norway, Australia, India, Beirut. He's just got this huge following of disciples just looking up to him and admiring him for what he's telling people. We're going to start in a second. I think I'm going to send Mr Nunn a message this evening. I believe you were a director of the Blackmore Bond where thousands of people lost their pensions and savings. Can you shed any light on the fate of the £46 million investors lost? Excuse me one second, I'll just get a tissue. It's just blocked me and booted me out and I'm now not able to even see his Instagram account. Obviously didn't like that question being asked. Linda's friend recorded the rest of the session and sent it to her so she can see how Philip Nunn reacted. Wow, see, I'm under attack. Many angles. I've posted one question to him and he stated that he's under attack from all angles. Just so you guys, guys are aware, um, there is some um, negativity flowing around about me, about my businesses, my previous businesses, and it's horrific, it's not a nice situation. But I'm here in service to you guys. He's hiding something, isn't he? He's hiding something from all his new followers. He's calling himself the Abundance Alchemist for two and a half thousand people that invested in Blackmore Bonds. He, he's actually turned their investment into dust, it's just evaporated. It's not, not really what I did, it's what happened. It's, it's, there's a difference, I've not done anything wrong, it's just something that happened. So I'm just getting it from all angles, anyway. So what are these 67,000 people gonna be potentially exposed to, or what risks are they gonna have in, in their lives by believing in this man? Philip Nunn who's been bankrupted in connection with one Blackmore Bond development, didn't reply to any of Panorama's questions, despite repeated requests. It's a big day for the Blackmore investors. They're meeting MPs, including some from the powerful Treasury Select Committee. If they win their backing, they may finally get an inquiry. I am shaking. I'm, I'm quite aware of how important today is. To represent the people that have lost their money is a huge thing, and I am feeling the responsibility a little bit. We're starting to get people to listen to us now, and today is an end goal, and hopefully we can kick that goal home and uh, get an inquiry opened, stop this happening to other people. Great to see you. Hi, Thank you very see much you. indeed. Good to see you, Kevin. Nice to see you too. I recognise that face. Hello. The bondholders of Blackmore Bond feel they have been badly let down by FCA and other regulatory agencies. The evidence suggests that when they realise they got it wrong, they try to cover up their tracks. The time has come to stop people hoodwinking us. We want to know the real facts. Like many of us, we invested a significant amount of money that's been taken. Uh, and as a family, we've lost £40,000. These schemes must stop, and the FCA need to police them. I'd like to say this is a, um, a one-off case, but the reality is we've seen a succession of cases like this where the FCA has failed, and it's failed here again. The, we do need a root and branch look at this. Yep. So I support another investigation on the lines of the Elizabeth Gloucester Report, London Capital of Finance, which was hugely critical of the FCA and individuals within the FCA, including Andrew Bailey. I mean, what we've heard today, what we'd heard before, makes it absolutely clear. You've got to have an equivalent to the Dame Gloucester Report to deal with the Blackmore issue, to deliver some justice for the people who essentially were scammed in an entirely public and what should have been regulated setting. We want to make sure that things like this never actually happens again. That the regulators and the other bodies are doing the jobs correctly. It is very, very, very important. We feel as if we've been turned over twice. 
first by Blackmore and then by the FCA. Now, hopefully, we can get justice. Patrick McCreish denies any wrongdoing and says the Blackmore bond was a potentially profitable, properly run business. The risks of investing were fully explained. Vulnerable people were not targeted and Blackmore stopped working with the sales company reported to the FCA. The insolvency service is taking no action against directors. He says he suffered hardship and to imply directors have millions stashed away is pure fantasy. He admits some business decisions were not right and apologises. I'm just putting together all this evidence that we've got. I'm shocked that these people are able to keep on operating like this. Nobody seems to be investigating them. Nobody's doing anything about it. We've done all the evidence gathering. I just found out that a substantial payment were made to Gibraltar. I just felt sick. I couldn't believe that I'd made such a poor decision. We're not financial experts, we're, we're amateurs, but we found so much evidence. We need people to listen to us. We want change! We want change! We want change! The authorities, they've got to look at this seriously and do something about it and stop these guys before it's too late, before they take anybody else's money. You know, there's thousands of people out there that have lost their life savings. Heartbroken. I mean, it's like the last bit of hope's gone. Pensioners may be too old to fight themselves, but I'm never going to stop fighting these guys. I'm going to keep on going until we get justice.